guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I'm here to do a book haul with you. I did some damage. I was sent a lot of books. I'm so, so lucky. So let's get into it. I think I have around 12, 13 books here to share with you. So many of these were sent to me. Um, from bookish friends and publishers who are also bookish friends um, and then there are I think two or three books that I bought myself well before the madness started. Um, rest assured I'm not going out and buying things right now unless it's like groceries. I'm very doing that. Okay just let's dive right in. Um, the first book that I was so kindly sent um, was The Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier. This was sent from Laura um, from the Book Bubbler. I'm going to actually link her uh, booktube channel down in the description box below, so go and check her out. And she sent a little note. Um, she got this off of my Amazon wish list, which is linked in the description box below. Um, and she said, hi April, I had to buy you something fun because you referred, uh, reference two major films of my childhood, The Secret of Nim, yes, and The Dark Crystal. Yes, both childhood films of mine as well. Oh, and she said, I hope you like this one. Daphne is a favorite of mine, Laura. So The Secret of Nim and Dark Crystal were absolutely two favorite, favorite films of mine. Although The Dark Crystal absolutely terrified me. What was it with the 80s? and scary children movies. What, why did they do that to us? I don't know, but um, maybe that just explains why I like horror and thrillers. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so she sent over the scapegoat, which was on my Amazon wish list. I wanted this so, so much. You guys know how much I love Daphne du Maurier. I've read Rebecca. I think Rebecca is the way to start, in my opinion. And then I read My Cousin Rachel. I loved them both. Rebecca is always like next level amazing. Um, this one, I remember um, Lauren from Lauren and the Books talking about this. And she really enjoyed this. This is about two men. One of them is English. One of them is French. And they look almost identical. They meet at a train station, I think. And they look so much alike that it's kind of uncanny. And they spend, they meet, and they spend the evening like drinking and talking and talking about each other's lives. And then the next morning, um, one of our main characters, John, wakes up to, re to realize that his French companion stole his identity and disappeared. And so they have to kind of act like one another. I think John has to take on the French man's identity. It sounds super interesting. And I do love a good Daphne du Maurier. And I love these covers in particular. So anyway, thank you so much, Laura. You did not have to do that. I'm so, so glad that you did because this just brings me so much joy. Um, but yeah, so that's The Scapegoat. Let me know in the comments below, have you guys read that one? And now we're going to move on to the books that the publishers have sent my way. Um, this next one was sent to me by Hashit. Um, this is Joy at Work. This is by Marie Kondo and also Scott Sonishin. I could be saying his name wrong and I do apologize for that. Now, Marie Kondo has has started me on the journey of like decluttering my shelves and really only keeping things that spark joy and she applies this to your work. Now I am going back to work um, mid-June and so when I saw they had a list of books that they were um, sending arcs of um, and this was one of them. I saw this and I was like, you know what? That could really help me out. It could be like a fresh start for me. Um, so this talks about, you know, digital clutter and um, just clutter in your actual work life as well. Um, so I am very, very eager to read this. I think it will really help me as I prepare myself to go back to work. 
Um, it'll be like a new office. I'm going to be sharing an office with, with one of my favorite co-workers ever, um, Sandra, or as I call her, Sandreas. So, I mean, I think this could really come in handy. Anyway, so that's the Joy, um, Joy at Work. And next, I've got a book that HarperCollins US sent me. Um, this one came out on April 7th, and I've already read it. Spoiler alert, I loved it. It's called The Lost Orphan by Stacey Halls. Um, this is about two women. One of them um, gives birth to a daughter, and she cannot keep this daughter. It takes place in London, 1754 historical fiction. She can't keep her daughter. She's very upset. She loves her daughter, but she's uh, poor. She is unmarried and she's given birth to a child out of wedlock. So she brings the baby to something called the foundling hospital where you bring your child and you leave a little um, token of something of yours behind to identify you along with the child. And uh, the idea is that it's not an orphanage. The idea is that people will come back for their children. So she saves up for the next like six years or something like that. She saves up enough money to get her child back. She goes back. Someone has claimed her child. Someone has pretended to be her and has claimed her child. So we follow her and then we follow a woman living in a townhouse. She's a... Um, kind of a shut in. She has major fear of leaving and you discover why it's so good. I gave this four stars. But the more I think about this, this might be a five star read. I was reading this when everything kind of went down. It was like mid March. Everything was kind of falling apart in our world. And I had a hard time um, continuing because my mind was, as you can imagine, and as you guys have experienced in so many different places. So um, that said, The Lost Orphan is amazing. Gorgeous, gorgeous writing, totally sucked in, very gothic. And I have her other book, The Familiars on My Shelves. And that makes me so happy because I can tell she's just going to be one of my favorite authors. So that's The Lost Orphan. Now the next two books were sent to me from Simon and Schuster Canada. Um, this next one is Florence Adler Swims Forever. This is coming out in July, July 7th. And it's historical fiction. And it's funny, the cover did not scream historical fiction for me. They sent um, an email with a bunch of covers. And I usually go through each one in case something sparks an interest in me. And I nearly passed over this one, even though I think this is a beautiful cover, but I would not have thought historical fiction. But it is, and it sounds amazing. And this takes place in Atlantic City in 1934, and we meet um, two parents of adult children. They have two girls, Florence and also Fanny. So Florence returns, and she is determined to uh, spend her summer learning how to swim across the English Channel. She's going to do it. Um, Fanny has come home. She is pregnant again after recently losing a pregnancy, losing a baby. She's on bed rest. And the patriarch of the house, Joseph, decides that they're going to take in a mysterious young woman who they recently helped to emigrate from Nazi Germany. Um, so all of these people are living under the same roof and they're desperately trying to shield and shelter um, Fanny from any sort of stress because they're afraid she's going to lose this baby. Devastation does happen. I almost feel like they give too much away on the back, um, but tragedy does strike this family and they have to shield this information from Fanny so that she's able to have this child. And I don't know how they're going to do it because it's a huge, huge thing to shelter her from. Um, it looks amazing. It sounds sad and interesting. And yeah, so that is Florence Adler Swims Forever. I love the rose gold detail on the front. Yes. Okay. The next is a thriller because you know me. I have to have a thriller in my life at all times. And when I found out that Simon & Schuster... Canada, we're going to be publishing The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. 
and I learned about what this was about, I had to, had to, had to get it. So this comes out in June, on June 23rd, this will be hitting the shelves and the online bookstores as well, in case you want to order it that way. Um, so this follows a woman who as a child um, was someone who sleepwalked. She, she did this very frequently. And one day she um, is sleepwalking. She goes out into a major rainstorm. I don't know if this torrential rainstorm, hurricane, I don't know what it was exactly, but she becomes lost. And I think she's quite young. She's six years old. She gets lost. She is found like clinging to a storm pipe or something like that. And everyone in her town thinks that she's like this miracle child. And she is kind of bombarded by the story throughout her life, like on the anniversary, the yearly anniversary of this, you know, the press come out and want to interview her. So this has followed her around far too long. And when she's old enough, she changes her name, she moves away. Um, and she thinks, you know, that part of my life is behind me, but she starts sleepwalking again. And she feels like someone is watching her, someone is following her. And it's just, yes, yes, I'm excited. So that is The Girl from Widow Hills. And then I've got four books that were kindly sent to me from Penguin Random House Canada. These guys really, really spoiled me, like just at the right time. Well, it's always the right time to be spoiled, I suppose, but um, it just really, really picked up my spirits in such a like anxiety filled time. Um, speaking of anxiety filled, <laughs> the, the first book that I have to share with you is The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. Eric Larson is a master at nonfiction. Um, I think I've only read Dead Wake by him before, but he's most well known for writing The Devil in the White City. Um, I um, struggled with Dead Wake. There was a lot of information about um, boats and how boats are constructed. This, um, when I'm filming this, I'm currently reading it. It is fascinating, like so interesting. This is all about Churchill, Winston Churchill, during World War II when he first comes to office. And um, it's about the London Blitz, the bombings. And it is unbelievably fascinating. Learning about the different kinds of bombs, learning about the politics surrounding him coming to office and trying to protect the, um, the public. Um, during this time and how he was able to um, keep people's courage up in a very terrifying time. It is fascinating and yeah so far I'm I'm loving it. Um, so that's The Splendid and The Vile by Eric Larson. I also love the cover of this. Oh my gosh so good. Um, and then I got three books from my Amazon wish list. I'm taking them off my wish list because I got them kindly, kindly from Penguin Random House Canada. They totally spoiled me. And I'm very happy to tell you, I think a lot of you are going to be really, really happy because I, a little while back, I did a video about the books on my Amazon wish list, which I've added to since then. But anyway, um, asking you guys to pick two books for me to buy and one of them was a hardcover one of them was a softcover for the hardcover ones so many of you wanted me to buy this book and then Penguin Random House Canada sent it to me so kindly and it is Long Bright River by Liz Moore um, this is about two sisters one of them is on the police force and one of them I think is on the streets practically. She's a drug addict. And um, our main character is on the police force. Um, this is, all takes place in Philadelphia. There was a murderer in Philadelphia killing people on the streets, people who are drug addicts. Um, and they're getting away with it most likely because the people that they're killing um, can be people who uh, society treats as kind of invisible. Um, luckily enough for um, these people, 
they've got this police detective who has one of her own, her own sister is in this position. She's terrified for her sister and her sister has gone um, missing. And so she's trying to find her. It sounds fantastic. I've only heard good things about Long Bright River. And yeah, I was just so happy when they sent this to me. Sounds like a great, great thriller. Something to like just dive into um, and kind of be swept away with. I mean, it's not uplifting, but it sounds like a super interesting book. Um, equally interesting, but um, is uh, based on a true story. This is a true crime book called American Predator. Uh, the Hunt for the Most Meticulous Serial Killer of the 21st Century. Now, I think I learned about this from Julie from A, a Girl and a Book. And it sounds really, really interesting. And I knew nothing about this guy until this book was released. This is about a man named Israel Keys. The FBI were looking for this man for many, many years. He would bury these kill kits. He'd put together these kill kits and bury them across a lot of the U.S. Um, and then he would travel to those areas, dig up the kill kits and kill someone in that area. And you can imagine how hard it would be to find this guy if the map is showing that he's everywhere. Um, so this is his story. Um, I hope that it's also, most importantly, the story of his victims. Um, I've heard that this is very well written and apparently if you liked All Be Gone in the Dark, you'll like this, which is why I've been so desperate to get this. So thank you so much to Penguin Random House Canada for sending this my way. I will be reading that pretty soon. And then the last book that they sent me was um, Jojo Moyes. It's The Giver of Stars. Now, I didn't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone. I didn't know that Jojo Moyes wrote historical fiction whatsoever. Um, I thought she only wrote like contemporary women's fiction. But I think this is not her first historical fiction. Uh, but it sounds so good. This follows a group of women in I think the 1930s or the 1940s. Yikes. 1930s. It follows this group of women who are taking part in Eleanor Roosevelt's traveling library um, program. So they basically travel around America, I think on horseback, and deliver books to Americans. That's basically all I wanted to know. I've Just the storyline of this sounds fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's The Giver of Stars. I was so, so happy when all of those books landed on my doorstep. Made me over the moon happy. So thank you so much to Penguin Random House Canada for spoiling me. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. And then the last three books are books that I bought myself. I think one of them I got from a dollar store. One of them I got from Value Village. Now this all happened well before all of this stuff went down. I do need to preface it with that. Um, the first is a Frederick Bachman. It's my grandmother sends her regards and apologizes. I feel like everyone has read this. I feel like everyone has read Frederick Bachman at this point, except me. This follows uh, a little girl named Elsa, and it also follows Elsa's grandmother. Now, everyone seems to think that Elsa's grandmother is a strange, kooky kind of character, but Elsa thinks her grandmother is this hero because she's an epic storyteller. So her grandmother one day gives Elsa a mysterious series of letters apologizing to the people in her life that she wronged. Um, Elsa reads them and um, I think she ends up trying to track down these people to send her grandmother's regards and apologize on her behalf. Um, it sounds really, really lovely and I definitely want to read this. Um, so that's one. And then the next one is very different. It's Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Now, Sarah Perry wrote The Essex Serpent, which I did not like. But this is supposed to be terrifying. At least the premise is terrifying. I have heard mixed things. 
but I've been wanting to read it for a really long time. So I could see myself giving this a whirl at like Halloween time. This is about a woman named Helen. Um, she moves from England to Prague and she works there as a translator. And while she's at work, she discovers a mysterious letter in the library, which is a strange confession and speaks of Melmoth the Witness, a dark legend found in obscure fairy tales and antique village lore. As superstition has it, Melmoth hunts her prey through the ages, dooming those she captures to the damnation of tireless, itinerant solitude. It sounds honestly quite scary. Um, I don't know if it is scary, but it, it's got such a gorgeous cover. I just, I'm really, really hoping that I'm going to like it. We shall see. This is definitely more like literary horror if it is classified as that at all. I don't know. Have you read it? Let me know in the comments below what you would classify it as. Um, and then next is I Know You Know by Gilly McMillan. I think I might have one more of hers on my shelves. I've never read her before and I found this at a dollar store for like three bucks and I thought I should get that. She writes a lot of series and I was very happy that this is a standalone. So this follows a mystery that happened um, many years ago, 20 years ago, when two 11 year old children, Charlie and Scott were murdered in Bristol and their bodies were dumped by a dog racing track. Now we follow, I think their childhood friend, Cody, um, and he has been haunted, haunted and saddened by the loss of his two friends for his whole life. Can you imagine being an 11 year old and finding out that your two best friends have been killed in such a horrible way? He decides, because there are so many loose ends, like someone has been convicted of this, but there are so many questions revolving around it. He decides to start a podcast and tries to answer some of those questions that he's had all of these 20 years. And then, a body is discovered in the same location all of these years later. So is the right man behind bars or is that guy still on the loose? And it just sounds really, really interesting. Um, I know that I'll have a lot of other books by Jillian McMillan if I do like this. So fingers crossed I do. So those are all of the books that I have to share with you today. I am really, I mean, we're all hunkering down. I think I'm kind of done with book hauls for a little while, but I have so many books on my shelves that are so interesting to get to, especially now, oh my gosh. So let me know in the comments below, have you gotten anything recently? Have you been ordering books online? Are you trying some way to help your local bookstores? Um, I'd love to know. Um, what you what books are you excited about and if you've read any of the books that I mentioned here I'd love to know what you thought of them in the comments below as well in the description box below I'm getting much better um, You can come and be my friend on Goodreads. You can follow me on Instagram You can go and check out my Amazon wish list, which I'm always adding to because I'm insane And I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're you and your family are super healthy um, Yeah, I will see you guys very soon Bye.